Greetings and salutations. This video is by request. This is a whirlwind tour of all of my audio toys. Hope you enjoy it. Take some Dramamine. There's no stabilization on this phone, and we will be moving around quite a bit. So we start out with what is now my main turntable, and that is a Fluence RT85. This turntable uh, has been a real joy. When I first got it, I had some problems with the Nagolka MP110 cartridge that was on it, some shielding and static issues. I have since swapped that out. There are videos about this turntable and about the various cartridges I have used on it. Uh, the last cartridge I had on it was an Audio-Technica AT uh, VM 540 ML, which is a fantastic cartridge. And it got bumped for this very lovely classic Stanton cartridge here. This is the Stanton 680EL, which is my most recent video about audio. And it is absolutely lovely. I have nothing bad to say about it at all. I would highly recommend the Fluence RT85 to anybody who is looking for a quality turntable. Out of the box, regardless whether you choose to get the Nagolka MP110 or the Ortofon 2M Blue option, I think you're going to be very pleased with it. Uh, the only problem that I have with it is that it comes with a feature where you can turn off or rather, you can, uh, the turntable will turn itself off at the end of a record. I recommend that you turn that off because it's a horrible feature. Use it in full manual mode and you will be a very happy person. Moving down a little lower in the rack here, you see we've got two professional CD players. The top one is a Tascam CD450, which is a standard rack mount radio station style CD player. And that CD player is hooked up both analog and digital. The digital output goes into the one on the bottom here, which is uh, the CDRW900 Mark II. This is a CD recorder. And I use it uh, for making CDs, not very often, but every now and again, and also uh, taking audio from records and getting it to digital. The DAC in this machine is absolutely fantastic. It's a Burr Brown DAC. There are videos on my channel about both of these CD uh, machines. I had a whole cavalcade of old 80s and 90s consumer decks I was playing with, and they would start skipping after a while, so I dumped them. And I just went professional a few years ago, and I'm really happy that I did. Now this is all hooked into, and you can't see much because it's the darkest corner of the room. This is a Sony STR-DH190 amplifier. I bought this, I don't know how many years ago now, uh, just for fun. It was cheap. I got it for under $200, and I thought, well, let's just see what this is really like. And I have kept it all this time because I love the sound, and also it has a top-notch phono preamp built into it. Not a big fan of outboard phono preamps. And this one is absolutely great. The sound quality is wonderful. It has a great headphone amplifier. The only thing I do not like about this particular box is the radio. It's just an FM radio. It's got a crappy wire antenna. It doesn't do real well. So if you're going to buy something to listen to the radio, forget it. There's nothing on the air in my community that I really want to listen to, so I don't miss it. It's all analog inputs. It has uh, an input on the front with a 3.5 millimeter jack. That's the portable input. It's got Bluetooth built into it too, and it actually doesn't sound bad. I have Bluetoothed uh, my laptop into it and uh, a phone just to listen to stuff like that, and it works really well. So I recommend this if you're on a budget, and it puts out quite a bit of power. It's a, a good sounding little amplifier. It is hooked into a pair of 10-year-old Sony B3000 three-way speakers. They don't make these anymore, um, and they have proven to be very good. They're very well-balanced speakers, if not uh, the most frequency accurate in the uh, flat and all that good stuff. But uh, speakers in this house, <laughs> it's not the ideal listening environment, so I don't care. I do a lot of listening with headphones, and here are my AKG. Why don't you lean back there? These are AKG M 
220 Pro headphones. These are the best sounding headphones I have. I like these an awful lot. And there is another turntable hooked up over here. So if we move this way, you will see that we have an Audio-Technica LP-W40-WN. I've had this turntable since 2017. I've done a lot of work to it. I have put uh, some damping material under the platter here around the rim that I took from a project turntable that got screwed up. Um, I have also... Uh, Change the cartridge from the stock uh, ATVM 95E that came with it to an Audio Technica. This is the uh, 91B, which is uh, basically an AT3600 that tracks at 2 grams. They don't make those anymore. They're nice cartridges. This is my secondary turntable, and I use the built in preamp in this turntable. And the thing I do not like about this turntable is that it it tends to be kind of boomy. It has lots of bass, and the high end is a bit rolled off. Now, if you use a really good high-end Audio-Technica cartridge, for instance, like the VM530EN or the 540ML, those cartridges tend to be a bit bright on regular preamps. So if I would put that on this turntable, guess what? It just about equalizes out, and it sounds good. However, uh, with that uh, Audio-Technica 91B there, it sounds good enough for what I use it for, and that is listening mainly to 45s and testing out records that I buy at yard sales and stuff like that. I usually give them a spin on this first because that cartridge is relatively inexpensive and styli are super easy to grab. Records. Here are some records. CDs. Lots of CDs. More CDs than records. Although I do have a whole bunch of 45s that are under the bed that you can't see. And I'm not yanking them boxes out. I might do that in a future video. CDs in the hallway. You want me to rip all of these and throw them away? I don't think so. Welcome to the sweet spot in my living room. I'm sitting on my couch in front of my TV. And this is my alternate listening position. Now you might be wondering, Joe, why is it you stuff your turntables into the corner of a bedroom like that and you got it on the bottom shelf and stuff like that? It looks like a kid's room. Well, it does. You know why? Number one, I like to go back there and be alone while other people are out here doing things. And the other thing is the floors in this room are so bad that if you have a turntable set up anywhere and somebody walks in the room, it goes bouncy, 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 skippy, skippy. So we don't do that. However, we do watch a lot of movies out here, so we have to have a pretty decent sound system. And the sound system hooked to the Sharp Roku TV here is actually quite simple. So I'm gonna get down on the flow. Sorry about the shaky shaky, guys. The amplifier here is a JVC A3 from 1979 that I bought refurbished. It's a cherry little amplifier, 22.5 watts per channel into 8 ohms. It will drive 4 ohm speakers. It's sitting on top of a Philips VCR DVD combination. And I do have some videotapes hanging around and several DVDs, so I'd like to have me one of those available. And this drives, right now, a pair of Fluence. These are... Uh, SS6 BK bookshelf speakers from Fluence sitting atop some stands that I bought on Amazon. These stands are pretty cool. Let's look at this one better. And don't judge me on the dirt and the dust and the cat hair, folks. I live here. So that worked out to be a pretty good idea. I did have some Dayton audio speakers. Those of you who follow my channel, um, I ended up giving them away. I just couldn't hang with them. Um... I didn't really do a whole lot of critical listening in here for a long time, and then I got this machine right here, which I'm about to show you. And then I started doing critical listening, and I really didn't like the sound. It was kind of fuzzy in the middle. So I switched over to my Fluence speakers, and I have been very happy ever since. Those speakers, by the way, are like subwoofers with tweeters. They got some killer bass. So this was a, a recent acquisition. 
Um, this is a Sony CDP CE275 five-disc changer CD player from around 2001. I bought this refurbished. Guy did an excellent job. It sounds wonderful. I put up a whole video about it. You can uh, watch me fumble through that if you like. It's on my channel. So I can uh, load this up with CDs, either ones that I made myself, or I can uh, put some commercial discs in there and let them play. Plus, of course, the output from the television is hooked up here, so I can watch TV shows and movies with the big sound on if I want to. I don't ordinarily do that, to tell you the truth. I use the TV speakers most of the time. We save the big sound for movies and uh, musical shows and things like that. But, uh, you know, because, you know, if you're just watching YouTube videos quiet at night, you don't want things going boom, boom, boom. Here's a fun little extra. This is a Sharp BH20BK little mini component system blue box, uh, boom box thing with Bluetooth. I saw blue, and that's why I was going to say a blue box. You could call it that if you wanted to, because that's really how I use it. I use it as a Bluetooth speaker, and I play CDs on it. It also has an AM-FM radio built into it, but the quality of the AM-FM radio is uh, lackluster, to say the least. So if you're a big radio fan, uh, I wouldn't recommend this. The FM is actually really good. The AM is terrible. And if you would upgrade the antenna that comes with it, which is basically just a wire, it probably would work better. Um, this came from an import company in California that was bringing these in from Japan. And I found it around Christmas time while I was Christmas shopping. And I said, I got to have me one of these. Uh, even for the size, the quality of the sound is pretty amazing. They tout it as having 50 watts per channel, but, you know, that's a laugh. You can find them on eBay. They go for about $300. Fun little toys. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, to the land of digital audio. This is my bread and butter. This is where I make my money. On the uh, right-hand side, we have a Linux Mint computer. And on the left, it is my work computer. And it is hooked into the network at the radio station via VPN. The guy that I work for who owns WZBB is an absolute networking computer genius. And he has set it up so even though I live 250 miles away from the radio station, I can sit down and go to work here every day. And it's like I'm there. Okay? So we have lots of software to look at. Now, as for the speakers, these are Creative Labs. Little bitty speakers. See that? I bought them mainly for their size. They are 2.0. They put out a surprising amount of bass, and they're very cool, but I don't have a, a number on them. If you look up Creative Lab powered computer speakers, they'll pop right up, though. You want the one with one driver, not two. The one with two, they have a mute in there that really screws things up. Okay, so uh, let's talk about what you're looking at here. This is Adobe Audition, which is audio editing software, and we have... One of the songs from the music library at the radio station loaded up in it. And yeah, you see that there's absolutely no dy dynamic range at all on that oscillograph. That's the way a lot of the music comes to me from Nashville. I usually download new songs as 44.116 WAV files, although sometimes from record companies I get them as um, really big files. We're talking about like uh, uh, 192... Now, what am I? Let me, let me get this right. Uh, 9624. That's what they come in as. So the sampling rate is 96 kilohertz, or yeah, 96 kilohertz, and it's a 24 bit uh, word. Those I have to convert down to 44.1 myself, and I use the dithering in here to do that. If you're going to be converting sample types, learn how that works, read up on it, because it makes a big difference in the sound. So this is the music library on the screen. This is the server uh, for the radio station. This is the automation system at the radio station. And I have access to that. And this shows me all kinds of interesting things. I can search for all of the audio in the system. Like here are, these are songs right here. Uh, also, you know, there's commercials and liners and voice tracks and stuff like that. It will also show me the, any active transfers going on. There are none right now, it's telling me. 
Uh, this is a very powerful tool and uh, I can set up other things with this. This is how I manage the library and that's part of my job. I am not the music director. I don't decide what gets played, but I begged and pleaded because they had audio issues at the radio station to please allow me to uh, redub the library, and I have. So the older stuff has come from those CDs you saw earlier, and the newer stuff I have downloaded from Nashville. And this is how I'm doing it. I also use this software to create commercials, boys and girls. Those lovely little ads you hear on the air. And I have some more software open here. This is a playlist editor, and uh, this is what I can use to move things around and add stuff. And I cannot see anything that I'm doing. I'm just going to pick an hour and click on it. So you can go through here and add things from the library and move things around and put voice tracks in and all that stuff. And then I use this software here to record my show. So this looks like the software they have in the main studio, except um, what it does is uh, lets me record and preview uh, so when it plays out over the air later that I know exactly what I'm doing. So if we come over here, you'll see that uh, here's a voice track right here, okay? So this would I can hear this, the end of that and the beginning of that. I can also record over intros of things. There's all kinds of neat stuff that you can do. And uh, this is the log, tells me what's going to play, what's coming up, and all that other stuff. So if we scroll down here a little bit, where is my, I can't find my, my mouse, it's there, it is, yes. I can't see what I'm doing at all, sorry. So if we scroll down, you'll see that uh, we come down to a break here. Uh, if I just keep going, there's some commercials. You get the idea, right? So that's how I do my show every day, is I record it, and then it plays back on the air. Moving over to the Linux computer momentarily, some pretty simple tools in here. I've got Audacity, and this is nice for processing stuff that's in my own collection. And then sometimes I will put things that I have digitally stored in here into this other machine, that sort of thing. There is no network connection between the two, and I like it that way. Uh, so what I do is either attach it to an email and email it to myself and my work email, or I will um, use a thumb drive. Just move it over that way. And the main two tool, tools that I do use here are Audacity and an old Linux program called Audio Tag Tool, which works on MP3s. Also, you guys have heard me uh, talk about MP3 Gain quite a bit, which is uh, a little terminal-based application that levels off MP3 files. Can't live without that one. And for making YouTube videos, I use Simple Screen Recorder. And this microphone here. We haven't talked about mics yet, have we? Uh, this is a CAD U37. It's kind of in a shadow. Let's put it over on the table here real quick. CAD U37 with a mic. This is a USB mic. It's relatively cheap. I've been using it on my YouTube channel for years. I just plug it in and start talking. As for the radio station, and you can't see it too well, this is a Audio-Technica AT2020. It is hooked into a DBX-286S. You can see all kinds of dust and dirt on top of that, but that is a mic processor back there <laughs> with a, a mic uh, pre on it. And then under here, we have 50 feet of coiled microphone cable. Oh, no! Yep, really. And then we have these two computers. Uh, the one on the left is the radio station. It's a Dell Octiplex, and the one on the right is mine. It's one of them uh, Dell workstations, and on top there, that is a Focusrite Scarlett DAC, and it takes the input from the microphone and digitizes it and puts it in the computer via USB, and then I have a pair of headphones hooked up to it. Let's get them out. Hold on. There they go. Which, uh, these are uh, AKG K240M headphones. I don't like these as well as I like the M220s I showed you earlier, so therefore they are relegated to doing this kind of work. They don't have hardly any bass in them at all, but uh, they're very rugged, and I've been using them now for more than three years to work uh, at the radio station. And that's it, boys and girls. That's my entire audio setup. That's what I do. Now, as far as the stuff that you've seen on the channel before that you're not seeing now, it's been sold or given away. There's a constant stream... <laughs> I try not to keep too much around because I don't have that much storage. 
Questions, comments, always love to hear from you. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm sorry for the shakiness, but I'm doing it on the phone, and you know how that goes. So I hope the Dramamine kicked in and worked for you. We will do this again soon. Comments, suggestions, always welcome. And remember, if you liked the video, please share it so other people can see it. Uh, having 125,000 subscribers does not mean 125,000 views, and you can help me out with that if you want to. We'll do it again soon.